The GOAT, a term used to describe someone who is the greatest of all time and is a common debate in sport. In football, the debate is between Messi, Ronaldo and Bukayo Saka. Now, I don't know anything about basketball, but according to Google, it's between Michael Jordan and LeBron James. And in F1, it's also quite complicated. So I did a poll earlier today and 54% of people said that the GOAT of F1 was Michael Schumacher, 25% said Lewis Hamilton, 15% said Senna, and just 2% said Fangio. And, well, multiple people said Nikita Mazepin. The problem though is that to find out who the true GOAT is, you have to compare drivers driving for different teams in different eras, and with the sport and regulations constantly evolving, it becomes increasingly difficult to find the driver that is simply the GOAT. The one thing that does help with F1 is that it is easier to compare the stats of drivers. In football, trying to compare most of Messi and Ronaldo's abilities and skills is often very subjective, and they also play in completely different leagues. But in F1, even if it's not always a level playing field, every driver has the same set of stats which can be measured, such as wins, podiums, poles, stuff like that. But to find the true GOATs, we have to work out which of these stats is the best for measuring a driver's ability. Points scored isn't a great stat, as the system for scoring points has changed often in the past. Championships won actually isn't a perfect stat, as it doesn't really tell the full story of a driver's career. For example, if you're only looking at the number of championships won, Felipe Massa and Nicolas Latifi are equal drivers, and I think we can just about say that that isn't true. So the best stat we are left with are race wins. However, this still isn't perfect, as a driver today gets just over 20 chances a year to win a race, whilst a driver from the past would often get only half of this. And also different drivers have been in F1 for different amounts of time. So what happens if we look at wins per race start? Well, Schumacher has a win ratio of 29.64%. Jim Clark has a win ratio of 34.72%. Just a little bit behind Lewis Hamilton with a win ratio of 35.64%. And Juan Manuel Fangio has a win ratio of 47.06% which is incredible. But who actually has the highest win ratio? It must be Senna, right? I haven't actually mentioned him yet. Well, wrong. The driver with the best win ratio of all time is Lee Wallard with 50%. Now, I know what you're thinking. Who is Lee Wallard and how the hell has he got the best win ratio of all time? Well, that's what you're here for. Welcome to this video. Lee Wallard was an American racing driver born in 1910 who competed in the American Automobile Association Championship. The first ever race he competed in was in 1946 and it was in the Langhorn Speedway in America. He finished in P11 scoring no points and then it wasn't until 1948 when he continued to race again, but still only in America. So this is where it gets pretty interesting. From 1950 to 1960, the Indy 500 race actually counted towards the World Championship which is what the FIA Formula 1 Championship used to be called. During this decade, only one regular World Championship driver actually participated in Indy 500, even though it still counted towards the championship. And that driver was Alberto Ascari in 1952, which was the year of his first championship win. So it was a kind of strange setup where, for a few years, the Indy 500 race counted towards the championship, but none of the regular championship drivers actually took part in it. So going back to Lee Wallard, he was still competing in races in America and crucially he was in the Indy 500 races between 1948 and 1951 and also once in 1954. As I mentioned before, Indy 500 races only counted towards the World Championship between 1950 and 1960, meaning there were three times he competed in Indy 500 for the World Championship which was in 1950, 1951 and 1954. In 1950, Lee Wallard started from P23, which is where he qualified, and despite this, he drove a fantastic race and ended up finishing P6, just two laps behind the race winner, Johnny Parsons. But unfortunately, he didn't score any points, as back then, only the top five drivers would actually score points. But next year, in 1951, he returned to once again compete in the Indy 500 race, which would again count towards the World Championship, which later became the Formula 1 Championship as we know it today. Before this event, another successful American driver, Tony Bettenhausen, had actually decided to pass up his number 99 Belanger special car as he wanted to drive a newer front wheel drive car. This meant that his car was passed into 
the hands of Lee Wallard for this race. This time, Lee Wallard had a much better qualifying session, qualifying P2 on the grid ahead of the 1951 Indy 500 race. After the first corner, the driver who started from third, Jack McGrath, took the lead of the race. However, by the end of lap one, it was our boy Lee Wallard who was in P1. Lee Wallard is ahead before the first lap ends, doing just over 122 miles an hour. He went on to lead for 159 of the 200 laps and ended up winning with a time of 3 hours, 57 minutes and 38.05 seconds. A minute and 47 seconds ahead of one of his teammates who finished in P2. Now this sounds like it may have been a simple race win for Lee Wallard. However, in reality, it was very far from simple. So it is often very inspiring and impressive when a driver wins despite having technical problems. In recent years, we had Lewis Hamilton win the 2020 British Grand Prix despite a puncture with just over half a lap to go. Also, Daniel Ricciardo, who won in Monaco in 2018, despite having an engine problem which meant he lost a crazy amount of engine power. And then obviously, one of the most famous examples is Senna winning his home race despite the gearbox problems. However, this doesn't compare to the problems Lee Wallard had in his four-hour race. So according to Wikipedia, Lee Wallard's car lost its brakes, suffered a damaged exhaust pipe and a broken shock absorber mounting. But not only this, with his car being basically broken, he had actually worn a fire retardant outfit without an undershirt, which caused him to suffer from serious chafing, which is when the skin becomes irritated as a result of friction. And this was so bad that he actually had to be treated in the infield hospital just after the race finished. All of this throughout the near four hour race meant that he actually ended up losing 15 pounds or 6.8 kilograms during the race, which is actually just unbelievably crazy, especially given how little g-force there was back then. I didn't even mention as well that his car in the race had the smallest displacement in the field. So a remarkable victory to say the least, reinforcing the idea of him being the statistical goat of F1. Unfortunately, a week after his incredible win, Wallard suffered severe burns after a crash at a race in Reading, Pennsylvania, which effectively ended his professional career. Following this though, he did race in one other Indy 500 race, which was in 1954. Luckily for him though, he actually failed to qualify for the actual race, meaning that his world championship record remained to be one win from two race starts, which gives him an incredible win ratio of 50%, a stat which has never been beaten to this day, almost 70 years later. In 1963, Lee Wallard sadly passed away aged just 53. However, his legacy lives on. I have to say, when I was beginning to find out about Lee Wallard and his incredible stat, I assumed there were already videos and articles online about him, but I found nothing which was very surprising. Stats don't lie, and statistically, Lee Wallard is the GOAT of F1. Now, I know it's not exactly the most convincing stat given the small sample size, However, it is still a stat nonetheless, and I'm surprised that there isn't more talk about this. So hopefully you've learned something new today from this unappreciated legend. It was a very interesting video to make. Comment down below if you had heard of him before, if, or if this is the first time you've ever heard Lee Wallard's name. But other than that, thank you so much for watching, and goodbye.